Heard me to speak more on the subject of sannyas, and I cannot disobey his order, but I also don't want to take so much time. So whatever I ever I've heard and um, whatever I've heard from Prabhuji and the Vaishnavas from Chidamir Dev, I'll try to say something. We know that we are called Godia. Usually when we call when we refer to Godia, we are referring to all the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Gore, followers of Gore. But also a deeper meaning is that we as followers of Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu himself is also Gauri. Because his followers of Gauri. Gauri referring to Shimati Radhika. Therefore his name is Gore. And we know that see Krishna he is, he is called Rasek Shikhar. He is the relisher of all rasa. But really, as Krishna, he is only relishing half the rasa. See, for there, when we talk about rasa, there is the, the lover and there is the beloved. There is a flavor tasted by the lover and there is the flavor tasted by the beloved. So, as Krishna, he is relishing that flavor of being the beloved. He is the supreme, like, enjoyer. He is the Vishaya Tattva. So, he is relishing this love of Radhika. But, he is only tasting that particular rasa as the, as the object of love. Now, he is also seeing how much Radhika and all the Braja Gopis and Braj Basis are enjoying so much love in loving him. So now he also wants to taste this love. So really, to be the, the all taster of all rasa, he also needs to taste this. So as Mahaprabhu, he is actually relishing now both rasa as the, as the lover of the beloved. So, now I'm bringing this topic because we can see how great really the love of the gopis that even Krishna himself, God, will never be complete unless he also tasting their this love. So, now this is the nature of this love the gopis have. That even Krishna, he said, Napariha, I cannot repay. I cannot repay, um, he cannot re even reciprocate. In Bhagavad Gita, he is telling that according to some, to uh, how much person is loving him, then he will reciprocate. But he can, we can see that uh, in, in Krishna Lila, he is telling the gopis that, oh, your love is so much, I cannot even reciprocate to this. So just be satisfied. With, with this love and so therefore when he came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu it's not only that he is tasting their love but he also wants to glorify their love so this this symptom of love see one one there's two symptoms of or two side effects of bhakti that is Gyan and Vairagya. So, we can see with, with the, the, the bhakti, the love of the gopis, we can see that how much they are renounced. They have even renounced their all the so-called morality, the so-called their, their chastity, uh, their so-called reputation in this world, their husbands, their wives. This is the, this is um, the, this is for Krishna. He is able to uh, not able to reciprocate. So now in this pastime of Mahaprabhu, he also is trying to 
to reciprocate by showing this example himself. So now, in pastime of Mahaprabhu, we know that he is inaugurating the Sankirtan movement. Really, when we talk about Sankirtan, the word Sankirtan means Samya Kirtan. Kirtan means uh, repeating of like the names and glories of God. But when we say Sankirtan, our Srila Prabhupada was, was telling that really Sankirtan means glorification of this rasa, of this love of the gopis. Because this contains the highest, the highest love. So really, we can only say that something is Sankirtan when really Radharani and the Braja Gopis are glorified. So really Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement is really glorification of Shimati Radhika and the Braja Gopis, Braj Basis. So like, sometimes we hear some chanting of the holy names. We cannot just consider it Sankirtan. Someone can be chanting Allah, 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 or something Jehovah, Jehovah, that's also names of God. But really, when these names is uh, with, is absorbed with all this love of the gopis, like let's say Radharaman and or uh, Rajendra Nanda, when when it it glorifies all these flavors of love in Braj, and especially when it's chanted by all the Rasik and Babu Bhaktas who are absorbed in these moods of, of the Go Gopis and Braja, uh, and uh, Braja Devis, like Arshila Gurudev. And of course, this does not include only just chanting the whole things, but also in Harikata, wherein really there's glorification of this love of the Gopis. Then that is really the Sankirtan. So, our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come, and he's inaugurating this Sankirtan movement. So, when he came here, we have heard this morning that one time he was chanting, Gopi, Gopi, Gopi. And then he was criticized by his disciple, or his student. And so then he has seen that, like, oh, how can I, now this is the nature of Kali Yuga, they're always finding fault. So for me to be able to, uh, to, to teach, then it is necessary that these people will also uh, first respect. There's, imp there's importance of uh, that they also respect. Otherwise, they will commit more apparat and what's, what is now uh, their, what is their chance now of being able to get his gift. So, we know in this world that there are, there's the Varnashram and the highest in the ashrams is Sanyasi, is the Sanyas Ashram. And anyone who is sannyasi, they always be respected. So, so then he's taking that role as a sannyasi. But we have to understand that Mahaprabhu's sannyas is not just taking this stage of the, the ashram, the, in the Varnashram Dharma. Really, what is this sannyas? And this is what any Gaudiya, like any followers of Mahaprabhu have to understand. We should, we should come to the point that we should also come, when we say Gorya, we should follow in the footsteps of Mahaprabhu. And that is one, like Mahaprabhu, he has taken birth in Nabadvi. Meaning, we also, if we really followers, like any followers of Mahaprabhu, we have to take birth in Nabadvi. What does that mean? It means that we have to, to take Diksha, that's real birth. We have to take Diksha in the family of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and where is that? In Nabadvi, where there is his Sankirtan movement was inaugurated. And specifically, where is that? In Yoga Bhid, in Shiva Sangha, where he's, he's inaugurating all this Sankirtan Lila. So we also have to take birth, take Diksha in this Sampradaya of Mahaprabhu. Meaning we cannot just imagine ourselves that I am father of Mahaprabhu. We have to surrender to someone who is really the line of Mahaprabhu and get the mantra. And then hear and follow all the principles and be really in that family. And then 
Also, that means that at one point in our life, we have to realize that to really be able to taste this gift that Mahaprabhu is giving, then we have to renounce all this, uh, all this so-called uh, relationships in this world. Not just that, even our all these desires for not just sense gratification, but all these desires for name and fame, all that causes all this false pride, we have to give them up and come to the point of tasting this real relationship with Mahaprabhu as his servant. And that's only when we experience this mood of humility being Trinata and so therefore you're always chanting Kirtamiya Sadahari. So at that point we are trying to be like the the Braja Gopis where they give up all the all their family uh, connections and their only desire is to be uh, pleasing to and be able to be in service of Sri Krishna. So this has nothing really to do with being in the Varnashram, like in a particular ashram. Mahaprabhu himself said, Naham Vipro Nacham Narapatir Bhatir Anapir Vaishyona Sudhyo Naham Barni Nacham Vipatir No Vas Yatir Bha Kinto Projan Nikila Paramananda Purnam Pritabdir Gopi Varto Padakamalayor Dasa Dasa Nadasaha So I'm not in any of the Varnashram. I'm not a Sanyasi, Vanaprasti, Grihasta, or Brahmachari. I'm not uh, Sudra or Brahmin. I'm not any of these material designations. What am I? I'm only Gopi Bhattu Padakamalayor Dasa Dasa Madasa. I'm only the servants of the servants of the maintainer of the Gopis. So, see, this is real sannyas. That even this, that you renounce even these ideas or uh, all these material designations, even the idea of you taking sannyas. Sometimes people, when they take sannyas, then they become proud. And then they're, then they, because you know sannyas, that means, like for example, Mahaprabhu himself said that if I take sannyas, then people will respect me, and therefore they will listen to what I said. So sometimes now we have idea that, oh, like I also want to take sannyas. But with the idea that, oh, now people will respect me. I get so many pranamis and that I'll be world famous as a great preacher. But Mahaprabhu really is, this has to be renounced also. What really is sannyas is we have to, to take, to follow in the footsteps of the gopis. Where really their only life is this uh, pleasure for Sri Krishna. And even when Krishna has uh, separated or left them, the only way, the only reason that they're remaining alive is because they don't want that when Krishna comes back, Krishna will see that they're not there anymore and then it will cause suffering to Krishna. Gurudev many times explained that, that like they could have left, all, they could have left their, they could already have uh, left their lives, you know, like uh, past or they, they're dead, they could be dead already. But the only reason that they're keeping themselves like alive is because that they know that Krishna may come anytime. And what happens if they come and they're they're not there? And so it will give so much unhappiness for Sri Krishna. So their love is so high and really even Krishna himself cannot fully um, he will want to understand and be able to glorify this. So this time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has renounced even his being God as the supreme enjoyer. So he has come as a devotee. And he's, and, and now, when he took sannyas, he went to Jagannath Puri. And there, he is taking classes from Srimati Radhika herself. But this time, Srimati Radhika is disguised as, also as a sannyasi, as Gadadhar Pandit in Tota Gopinath. And there he is learning how 
the gopis are loving Sri Krishna. We know in Krishna Lila, Srimati Radhika and the Braja gopis, they cannot, it is the nature of love, that you cannot tell your, your, love, your beloved how much I love, like directly, how much I love you, or I love you. You cannot say that directly. But this time, in, in uh, disguise as a harikata, then Gadadhar Pandit is telling all the, the feelings of Shimati Radhika and the Braja Gopis. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna himself is there listening and is understanding, oh, this is how Radharani felt. This is what happened at that time. And oh, these are his mood, her moods at that time. So in this way, he's learning. And then later on in the night, he goes back to Gambira where he's staying and with Rai Ramananda and, and uh, Swarup Damodar, then he's trying to remember all these things and relish it through the songs and separation songs of, of that Swarup Damodar and Rai Ramananda would sing in the night. So like this, uh, in this way, he is tasting uh, all these moods of Shumati Radhika and the Braja Gopis. So like this, if some point in our lives, all those followers of Mahaprabhu, we have to understand that we should come also to this point where this Gopi Bhav, we pray that it will also come in our heart. And automatically because of this love, auto automatically this, this mood of renunciation and, and and understanding real knowledge, it will automatically come. So like Gurudev always say that uh, you really don't have to, and this is also what happened to our Siddha Raghunath Das Goswami. When, when he approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first time, when he met him, him in, um, in Shantipur, our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, uh, don't don't be like a, uh, don't do Markat Baryagya. Don't be a renunciate like a monkey. Monkeys, they're very renounced, you can see. They're naked and uh, they're living in trees. But at any time they're looking and if there's any particular chance, then they steal and we, we see that in the market. So, like I said, don't be like that. Just just go, go back to your house and Internally, you do your bhajan. Externally, you, sh you try to perform just like the regular uh, worldly activities. But internally, uh, you, you do your seva to Radha and Krishna. Because at some point in life, it will happen that automatically you will just renounce all these material things. You will renounce all this desire for yourself all of these de desires for sense gratification. Why? Because it's, Guru explained it's just like passing stool. At, at the time of the day when you really need to pass stool, no one has to tell you that, oh, go pass stool. You will have to pass stool. You don't have to think even that should I pass stool or not. If you need to pass stool, you will have to pass stool. It's the same way, when this love really will come, and this open love will come automatically, your whole Consciousness will just be to please Sri Krishna. No one will have to tell you, no one will have to tell you like, oh, like renounce this thing, leave your parents, leave your so-called friends. This will happen automatically. And this is, when this stage comes, this is real sannyas. And therefore, our Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has shown us that only when this thing comes, when your only desire is for the love for Sri Krishna, then this gift that is giving will really uh, you be a, a recipient. And so uh, sometimes we see that even devotees, like now we're in Mahaprabhu's place, so we pray that we can meditate on this gold brain, this love of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Gornitai that they're distributing. Not that now there's a new philosophy. Uh, and they've even written it in a book, love yourself. Uh, they're, they're telling like, if you cannot love yourself enough, then you cannot love, you cannot love Gurudev, you cannot love Krishna. But the nature of love is selfless. 
This is totally one, now we can count it as one of the new Apache Danta. And it's very unfortunate that in this book, even Shiva Gurudev's picture is there. And it's like by followers of Shiva Gurudev. So they're saying, like, love yourself. Not even the Christians say like this. So, I'm um, sorry for bringing the topic, but um, they're um, just following Prabhupada's instruction. I, forgive me if I've said many speculation, but like a little baby ordered by the parents and the other brothers, just by speaking something, at least I hope they become pleased and hopefully by their mercy, by their blessing, I can also be a recipient of this Gopi mood that Mahaprabhu is distributing. Secondly, I have to make an announcement to all the assembled professionals and patients to them the gun and I have been asked to speak on that, this elevated subject of sinyas and to be utterly unprepared and useless. This is my unfortunate condition. So we've heard very nicely from Krishna Kalinapu, what is the understanding of sannyas in this Gaudiya Parampara. We heard this morning, we've heard many days where Krishna explains this Sarvadharma Paritya Mam Ekam Shadam Braja Antam Sarvabha Pridhi Mursa Sani Masatra. Krishna says that you should give up all types of religious duties in this world and take shelter of me unconditionally. So, what should we give? Sannyas can be thought of as renunciation. Sannyas is renunciation. So what should we renounce? It is not that we want to renounce. Actually, we want to renounce maya or what is illusion and accept truth. So we see there's so many different things in this world which poses truth that are actually illusions. So we have to give all these things up. So you should give up all these false, what is, you think of as dharma and as a dharma. Both of these things should be given up. Dharma in this world, dharma towards our parents, dharma towards society, our duties towards even the demigods, all these things are, if you give water to the base of the tree, then the tree is naturally nourished. So Krishna, is the root of all existence, is the prime cause, Anadi Adi Govinda. So by serving him, and this is naturally everything else, all everything will be fulfilled. So the Jiva by nature is servant and he always has to serve. So that cannot be given up. We cannot give sannyas of our service tendency. But we should give up sannyas of, we should have renounced the tendency to serve Maya or illusion and embrace the tendency to serve Krishna. As one returns this space away from the darkness will, if, if you're standing with your back to the sun, then you'll naturally be in the shadow of darkness. So you turn away from the shadow toward the sun, then you'll be in light. 
so we have to give out Maya as renunciations and accept services of Sri Krishna.
and he said, it was really early in the morning, and he said, I'm thinking that even though Mahabharu is known as the most merciful, how can he be the most merciful? What, look what he did, he left Vishnupriya, his very young wife and his mother, he left them, of course all of them, but especially he left Vishnupriya in such a condition. How can he be merciful at all? So the devotees tried to give some answers, but in the end Gurudev said, He is so merciful that he is showing us that in determination to receive only this Mother Rasa, you will have to give up that which seems like the most dear to you in this world. Anything of this world that um, we are so attached to will actually have no meaning. Um, and we won't be able to have any of these things eternally. So Mahaprabhu showed us by um, leaving his most dear possession, Sri Vishnu Priya Devi, that, <coughs> that this is how um, actually um, when one is tasting the positive, when one is tasting Anurag, then naturally, naturally Vairagya will come. This is uh, exemplified in the life of Srila Gorky Srodas Pavidi Maharaj. The Vaishnavas always explain this on, on the day of his disappearance in Kartik time. When one has Vishesh Anurag, then naturally all Vairagya will come. So we see that Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur, he was a sannyasi, but he wore very thick, large, expensive jacket. He drove in a motor car, which back then was like owning your own airplane. And he did so many things, but what was his mood? He was fixed. He, he, would, he promised that all he would uh, absorb his mind and senses in was Madhu Rasa, Sri Krishna's sweetness. Then anything that Krishna um, presents to him that may help him in his goal and also the goal of spreading this Madhurasa, if, if he accepts that and uh, engages it in his purpose, that is called Yukta Vairagya. So, um, anyway, Prabhuji was uh, explaining that uh, in Kattava, we visit the place of Jagai and Madhai. Actually, we know that um, in, in their eternal um, position, they are Jaya and Vijay. And somehow, in the course of their sincere service, uh, it was, of course, a pastime and a lesson. They received a curse from young Brahmanas, Brahmasha. So we have to be very careful, even in the course of sincere service, we must, um, we must carry it out very carefully. Because um, we see what happened in this case. It was not even their fault, they were very nicely greeting the four Kumaras, but still somehow they uh, got angry and um, Anyhow, Prabhuji continued that Jagai and Madhai were, after they were delivered by Nityananda Guru and Mahaprabhu, they were doing bhajan in this place. But still they had some pain in their heart. Still they felt that they weren't able to absorb fully what Mahaprabhu wanted them to. And they brought this, this pain to Mahaprabhu and he said, um, Nirantara Kuru Vaishnava Sevan Ard Kuru Nam Sankirtan that Prabhupada explained that he, until they took many lifetimes, they took three lifetimes and they came even a fourth time to this Jaya and Vijaya, until they performed Vaishnava Seva and Nam Sankirtan, they were not able to get the uh, full relationship as they had before with Mahaprabhu. This is the greatness of, uh, the sweetness of Vaishnava Seva. So, um, Mainly, what I wanted to express was externally, sannyas means to renounce. But even uh, we've heard from the Vaishnavas that they, they're not so interested in only renunciation. Actually, what can we renounce? Everything belongs to Krishna. 
Everything belongs to Bhagavan. And some Vaishnavas even in, uh, absorbed in a very sweet mood. They say, the only thing I have is my Guru Maharaj and my God brothers. Why would I ever want to renounce them? So, well, one, one time Gurudev was telling one, one of his devotees, now it's time to take sannyas, but he was jokingly saying, no, all, all I have is you, why, why should I give you up? Why should I take sannyas? So clearly we know that the Gurudev is trying to um, give some other hint when he's offering sannyas. It means this only that he wants to give this Gopi Pahak mantra and he wants to accept us into this um, this family. And if we really make a determined effort that all we want is the sweetness of Radha and Krishna and the service of the Vrajavasis, then this is actual sannyas. The uh, Mahaprabhu said we have to follow the Vrajavasis and we have no consideration for the way anyone else follows. The Vaishnavas say repeatedly that Mali Ashoda, she is actually a sannyasi. She doesn't shave her head and have a dunda or anything, but she is she is completely absorbed in Anurag for Krishna. And uh, the, of course the Vrajadevis and Srimati Radhika, they are the best sannyasis. So this is the deeper secret meaning behind sannyas. And I just trying to follow the order of the Vaishnavas. Please be merciful on me. One time I'll put in this